Our next speaker, our keynote speaker, has spent many years working at grassroots level in Mount Roskill, uh, driven by the core belief that people do well when living, in a strong, when living in strong communities. He spent a lot of his time ensuring that big Aussie banks give their New Zealand workers a fair deal. Please welcome MP Michael Wood. Koto Katoa, Namaste, Ni Hao, Shub Diwali as well at this time of year. And good evening and welcome to the very best electorate in all of New Zealand, everyone. You're right here in the middle of the Mount Roskill electorate, and it's a real delight to speak with you this evening. I'm Michael Wood, and I'm the guy who gets to speak about the things that are left over after the previous three people uh, have spoken, <laughs> which is a particularly special task. I was thinking about something that Marie asked us all before, though. I think the date was the 25th of October, 2008. And as I was ha having my second go at the excellent chicken wings at the back, I worked out what I was doing then. And what I was doing then was campaigning in the last week of the general election of 2008, which for those of you who remember your politics, is the last time that my lot, the Labour Party, got turfed out of office. <laughs> and we kind of knew that was going to happen at that time. And it was a great question to ask. It just sort of set off a little chain of thinking in my head about what do I draw from that. Um, because after that, we lost the election pretty badly. We then lost another election. We then lost another election. We had about four leaders along the way and plenty of sort of moments with your hand and your face. And then last year, we became the government again. And the little lesson that, that your question um, uh, drew to my mind was when you believe in something, whether it's what you're doing in politics or business or with your family, you just keep on going. And I think that's a really important thing. So thank you, Marie, for that. Um, ten years before that, in 1998, I was at my, in my first year at... Uh, Auckland University and I started my first and to date actually only small business. Uh, it was a small business I started with free, uh, two friends of mine. One was called Sean and one was called Rick and the business was called Semritz which stood for Sean, Michael and Rick talk shit. <laughs> that, that wasn't really good for our consuming public so we said to the people that were buying our books it was Sean, Michael and Rick talk about stuff. And it was a series of um, textbooks, revision guides for uh, seventh form or year 13 students. Uh, we were first year university students and we'd done pretty well in some of our subjects. I was great at art history. My other two friends were really good at physics. And so we wrote these little A5 revision guides for seventh form students. And then we marketed them to schools. It was more difficult in those times. We mainly did it by fax, actually, at that time. And um, the great little lesson I, I drew away from that uh, is that in business, and you guys all know this, is you have to be prepared for anything. Um, because, you know, we'd put the stuff out, we had no idea how it was going to go, it was just this crazy idea that we were three 18-year-old guys had, we wanted to earn some money to pay our way through university. We got a few orders in the first few weeks, and then all of a sudden we had a week, we got about 300 orders. And we just had no idea what to do. We hadn't actually thought it through. <laughs> Um, but we got there, we worked it out, we scrambled, we went to people to help us and we got through. And uh, for a few years at university we had this great little business that helped us to do what we needed to do, which was to pay our way through university uh, to pay our fees. So that was one little lesson um, out of my pretty brief experience in small business. You've got to be ready for anything. The second one was a little bit more sobering and it was quite soon after I was elected an MP two years ago. And some of you might remember in the newspapers um, there was a story about the Crown Superette here in Mount Roskill. Does anyone remember that? Yeah. yeah. And it was these lovely, lovely people who uh, had purchased the Crown Superette, a little dairy in the middle of Mount Roskill, and they were violently robbed, not once, uh, not twice, uh, but three times. And the third time that they were robbed was a particularly savage attack. Lovely, lovely young couple, Jatesh and Preeti, um, were, were beaten very badly along with um, one of their mothers, and they basically couldn't go on. And the little aha moment that came out of that for me that I'd never thought about before was that for people in small business, you are vulnerable. I'm not just talking about the safety thing here. I'm talking about the fact that they had this event that happened to them and they didn't have anything to fall back on. You put a lot at risk when you put your money and your passion and your time into your small businesses. It's kind of one of those things where you can go into a like many of us do, wage or salary job, and you kind of know what you're going to get. You kind of know that there's a job to do and you know what you get paid week to week and there are certain securities around it. You go into a small business and it could go like that or there could be big rewards. It's a much bigger spectrum between success and failure. 
And that was a little, a real moment for me when that happened um, uh, with Jatish and Preeti. And so I just have a huge admiration uh, for all of you who do take, take that risk and put your creativity and your ideas and your energy uh, into building small businesses. And as Priyanka said, it's a really important part of our economy. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how the government sees and wants to work with small businesses in terms of the bigger economic objectives that we need to have as a country. Um, for us as a government, we're really focused on the idea of well-being. And you'll actually see that in the budget next year, instead of just talking about our rate of growth and our surplus or deficit, now th those things are important and we'll still talk about them, but instead of just talking about them, we're going to start talking about the well-being of New Zealanders. Things like how many of our people have homes or are living on the streets. Things like can we swim in our local rivers and creeks or are they polluted? Things like how many of our children are growing up in poverty or growing up in good homes where they have prospects and hope? Those are the things that actually are about well-being. And the things like the growth and the surplus or the deficit, those are about how we get to those other things. They're not the ends in themselves. And small business has a big part to play in the well-being of this country because you guys collectively generate about one-third uh, you have uh, uh, generate one third of the jobs in New Zealand and about 25% of our GDP. So that's a huge contribution to make. New Zealand is a good place in many ways to set up a small business. Um, we're generally rated by places like the IMF as the best place, the simplest place in the world to set up a business. We're generally seen as one of the least corrupt countries in the world. Now that's not to say we can't do better on all of those things, but compared to most places, we do pretty well. We're a stable democracy, you can pretty much generally trust the courts if a case goes to them, you don't have to worry about corruption and all of that kind of stuff. We've got pretty good infrastructure. But we've also got some issues on the other side. 35 years ago, we had the same amount of wealth per person as Australia. Now we're about 40% behind them. We've got one of the lowest rates of productivity uh, in the developed world. We put less into research and development than most other countries that comp we compare ourselves to. So we've got some big strengths but we've also got some places in which we haven't been doing as well as we can, could. And if we want to fix some of those problems that I talked about before, then we as government have got to make some good decisions and we've got to help people out sometimes. But we've also got to get that productive and inclusive economy going over on the other side. And that is where I think we as government can be working more closely and more effectively with the small business community to be driving productivity, to be helping small businesses to succeed, to be helping you to grow because there are so many very, very good ideas out there. When I talked about the notion of well-being, the way we're thinking about that is um, through a notion of what are called the four capitals. And these capitals are natural capital, human capital, social capital, and financial capital. <coughs> natural capital are all of those things that we draw off in our natural environment. The fact that it rains a lot in New Zealand. Well, we're a farming country. We need that. That is a value that we have. The fact that our biggest foreign exchange uh, earner is tourism, that's to do with the natural beauty and assets of this country. So those things have value. Our human capital, that's all of you sitting here, people with good ideas, um, people who have got, um, gone and gotten an education and learned skills. Our social capital is the fact that in this country, to a large degree, we can trust each other. Um, we have courts which, which, and tribunals we can go to when we have disputes. People not perfectly, but to some degree have a sense of safety when they operate in our communities. And physical capital is stuff like the roads and transport, that needs fixing in Auckland. Things like decent broadband connections which are critical for you in business. So the way that we're thinking about wellbeing as government is how can we support all of those capitals to help you in what you're doing and other New Zealanders in their various pursuits. And that goes down into a whole lot of detailed stuff. And I'll just read off a few of the, a few of the specific things that are perhaps relevant to small business. So if we, look at things, uh, if we look at the human capital, research and development, which I mentioned before. We've recently introduced, we're about to introduce what we call a research and development tax credit that's going to give businesses like yours the opportunity uh, to have a tax credit when you invest in that stuff that's going to get our productivity up. Things like the trade agenda that Priyanka mentioned, the CPTPP, and there's the RCEP, um, uh, arrangement that we're looking to progress to really try and build our relationship with India and South Asia. Things like a fairer tax system, making sure that the multinational companies are paying their fair share of tax, 
but they're also giving small businesses a fair go. And a small example of that is that earlier this year, we had a piece of tax legislation before us at our select committee, uh, which proposed to take away um, a particular um, um, payroll subsidy that we have um, to go to, um, that supports um, payroll intermediaries, which help a lot of small businesses with your tax arrangements. And at the select committee, we heard from small businesses that was actually really valuable, so we've retained that uh, in there. And on the security side, there's a big investment we've put through in terms of 1,800 new police, trying to make sure that we've got a more visible presence of police in our local communities, so that people and communities and small businesses can have that sense of safety. The final thing I want to say is that what we've got to do as a government is to be here and to listen. And I just really want to thank the organisers of tonight's event. It is so, so important um, that, that we have these kinds of forums. Wellington is a weird place. It is a very weird bubble. And it's easy for politicians to get... Yeah, you've heard a bit about that the last couple of weeks, right? It's very easy for us to get caught up in that. And so to actually be able to be face-to-face -face with people in small businesses and communities and to hear what you think and your issues and your ideas is just so critical for us. I want to end with a quote as well. It seems to be the thing that we do. It's a quote from Einstein. He was a pretty bright guy, right? He said, strive not to be a success, but rather to be of value. So what is the value that we can all contribute to the community around us? If we do that, we'll all be successful. Thanks very much. Thanks so much, Michael. So we've got a few questions that have come through. Um, how does the Labour Party plan to improve international trade with Asian countries? Yeah. Look, we want to play a leading role in this area, OK? Um, so David Parker, as Priyanka mentioned, is leading this agenda called Trade for All. Um, we as a small um, country at the bottom of the world absolutely have to trade if we want to build our prosperity. So we took a lead role in getting CPTPP back on track. We're playing a lead role in the RCEP negotiations. Um, thinking about or having a conversation before about our trading relationships with Ethiopia. Well, I would say that probably India today in terms of the trading relationship is where we were with China 30 years ago. And if you want to look 30 years into the future, that's going to be Africa. And so we've got to be putting the, res the, the time and the resources and the effort into building the relationships now. One of the things we did this year in the budget, and we actually got a whole lot of stick for it, is we put about a billion dollars into diplomats and um, embassies and building our trading relationships around the world. And we got criticised for doing that. But that is how we will build the relationships that not just next year, but in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years' time, enable us to get those kind of trading relationships that will benefit all of us. Uh, well, come on. <laughs> so we've also got another question, and this one's a bit more tricky. So it's about fuel. Yep. <laughs> thought we were going to get away tonight without the fuel <laughs> question. <laughs> Go for it. So it's about uh, what is the government doing about fuel prices? Yeah. Um, we're doing a couple of things. Um, the most important thing is that this week we passed what's called the Commerce Amendment Bill. So we have absolutely had fuel uh, price increases uh, over the last few months. Some of that has been to do with um, increases in excise duty. There's no getting away with that. And actually it's something that we campaigned on because we said that the situation in Auckland cannot go on. We cannot continue ignoring the transport chaos that is happening out there every single day on our roads. That is costing businesses in Auckland a billion dollars every year of lost productivity. So there is a um, regional fuel tax, and that is going directly into initiatives to unlock that. But actually the biggest part of the, the petrol price increases have not been the excise tax. It's been uh, partly to do with the dollar. We can't do too much about that. But a lot of it has been to do with the petrol companies increasing their margins significantly over the last 10 years. The last government did a report on this one year ago, which basically said there's a big problem here and the companies are covering up and not providing the information to help us understand there's a competitive market. So we've passed the Commerce Amendment Act, which is going to enable the Commerce Commission to do a proper market study into the fuel market to make sure that we have a properly competitive market. And that is going to be the biggest thing that we can do to put pressure on them to bring prices down to reasonable levels. And that's underway now. Thanks, Michael. We've got a question from a person called Baptist. They have said, should, uh, we should change the forms that we fill in. If there is a New Zealand European, then there should be a New Zealand Indian, New Zealand Sri Lankan, etc. 
What is the present government doing about our forms? So we've just had the census, and I, I wonder if the question perhaps uh, arose from that. And this country is, uh, well, this city, Auckland, is generally rated as the fourth most diverse city in the world. And this place we're in right now, Mount Roskill, is the most diverse part of New Zealand. We have about 200 languages, a huge number of different cultures and faiths, and that's an enormous strength. One of the things we've got to navigate, and I think we've done it pretty well as a country so far, is how do we recognise the benefits of having such a huge amount of diversity and allow a thousand flowers to bloom in this country? I'm a huge believer that recognising and celebrating that diversity makes us a better place, will ultimately make us a wealthier place if we do it well, actually, as well. But at the same time, having a shared sense of national purpose. I'm not talking about fracturing to lots of little different tribes. We're all New Zealanders here. We're all Kiwis. We're here. We love this country. We're all working to make it a better place. And there's no simple answer about how you um, do both of those things. But I think we're doing it pretty well without making people feel like they're different. Uh, the, the next question was, um, I would say, more of a technical question. So um, it's, it's talking about the international accounting standards. Uh, the International Accounting Standards Federation is adopting six capitals. Jazz has been considered by the Labour. Has this been considered by the Labour Party? Okay, there's um, a huge amount of work that's going on at the moment around this concept of the Living Standards Framework yeah. uh, that I spoke about, um, and the notion of the four capitals is, is pretty commonly applied in other places. Um, but it's not closed off at this stage. So the select committee that I chair, the Finance and Expenditure Committee at the moment, is running a series of briefings to help us understand how other places and other institutions around the world have um, recognised different capitals well and used them well. And the Minister of Finance, Grant Robertson, is leading a process around it. So I'd encourage anyone who's got additional good ideas at the scene out there, um, send me an email with them and I'll, I'll feed it into the mix. We want to make sure we capture all of the information we need to capture to drive policies around wellbeing. Thanks, Michael. So we've, um, we've actually got um, two, I think a, a couple more days left on that tax working group uh, feedback. So if you can remember to put your thoughts in, that might be another good way. Or, or as um, Michael said, you could uh, email him. Um, thank you very much. I think we're gonna close, close up there. Um, yeah.